the Bell Test, the experiment that proved Einstein wrong. What if I told you that reality as you know it might not be real? What if there was a single experiment, a single decisive test, that could ask the universe a profound question? Is the world a collection of solid, definite objects with pre-existing properties, governed by cause and effect? Or is it a ghostly, interconnected web of probabilities that only solidifies into fact when we deign to look at it? For decades, this was the central, raging debate at the heart of physics, a philosophical war waged between its two greatest titans, Albert Einstein and Niels Bohr. Einstein, the champion of classical intuition, insisted on a reality that was both local and real. Bohr, the oracle of the new quantum theory, argued for a reality that was probabilistic and strangely holistic. For years, the question seemed unanswerable, a matter of taste rather than science. And then, a quiet physicist from Northern Ireland named John Stuart Bell devised a theorem so powerful, so elegant, that it transformed an abstract philosophical argument into a concrete, testable prediction. This is the story of Bell's theorem and the experiments that followed, the story of the test that put reality itself on trial and delivered a verdict that proved our common sense fundamentally wrong. To understand the genius of Bell's test, we must first return to the philosophical battlefield laid out by Einstein. Despite the overwhelming predictive success of quantum mechanics, Einstein could never accept its core tenets. His worldview was founded on two principles he believed to be non-negotiable. The first was locality, the idea that no influence can travel faster than the speed of light. An event here cannot instantly affect an event on the other side of the galaxy. The second was realism, the belief that objects have definite objective properties that exist whether or not we are observing them. The moon is still there, with a definite position, even when no one is looking. These two principles, taken together, form the worldview of local realism. It is the foundation of all classical physics and of our everyday intuition. Quantum mechanics, however, seemed to violate both. It described particles in a superposition of states, violating realism, and connected by the instantaneous influence of entanglement, violating locality. In his final brilliant assault on the theory in 1935, the EPR paradox, Einstein argued that the spooky action at a distance of entanglement was so absurd that it must mean the theory was incomplete. There must be, he argued, pre-existing hidden variables or instructions that particles carry with them which determine the outcome of our measurements in advance. The quantum world was not probabilistic, just secretive. For nearly 30 years, this debate remained purely philosophical. There seemed to be no conceivable experiment that could distinguish between the two worldviews. How could you test for hidden variables that are, by definition, hidden? It was a metaphysical stalemate. The Copenhagen interpretation, with its pragmatic shut-up-and-calculate ethos, became the dominant view, not because it had won the philosophical argument, but because it worked. The deeper questions about the nature of reality were swept under the rug. Then, in 1964, John Bell, a physicist at CERN, decided to take Einstein's thought experiment seriously. He wasn't trying to invent a new theory. He was simply trying to translate the abstract philosophical argument about local realism and hidden variables into the rigorous, unambiguous language of mathematics. 
The result was Bell's theorem, a piece of logic so profound it has been called the most profound discovery of science. Bell started by assuming Einstein was right. Let's assume, he said, that the universe is governed by local realism. Particles have definite, pre-existing properties, hidden variables, and no spooky, faster-than-light communication is allowed. If this is true, Bell was able to prove, through a simple and elegant mathematical inequality, that there must be a fundamental limit to how strongly the measurements of two entangled particles can be correlated. Imagine you have two magicians, Alice and Bob. You separate them and ask them a series of random yes-no questions. If they had coordinated their answers in advance using a shared set of hidden instructions, there is a limit to how often their answers can agree. They can't be perfectly in sync for every possible question. Bell's inequality provided the exact statistical limit for this classical correlation. It was a concrete numerical cap on how spooky a common-sense universe could be. But here was the master stroke. Bell then calculated what quantum mechanics predicted for the same experiment. The mathematics of quantum theory, with its description of entangled particles as a single unified wave function, predicted correlations that were stronger than the classical limit. It predicted a level of coordination between the two distant particles that should be impossible in a universe governed by local realism. Quantum mechanics predicted that Bell's inequality would be violated. Suddenly, the philosophical debate was over. Bell had provided a clear, testable prediction that could finally settle the argument. He had devised a way to ask the universe itself which worldview was correct. You simply had to build an experiment sensitive enough to measure the correlations between entangled particles and see if they obeyed Einstein's classical limit or violate it in favor of Bohr's spooky quantum reality. The first crucial tests of Bell's theorem were performed in the late 1970s and early 1980s by a team led by the French physicist Alain Aspect. The experiments were masterpieces of precision. His team created a source that could emit thousands of pairs of entangled photons in opposite directions. These photons flew towards two separate detectors, each of which could measure their polarization. Crucially, the settings of the detectors could be changed in a few nanoseconds while the photons were already in flight. This was done to close the locality loophole. The possibility that the detectors could somehow be communicating with each other at or below the speed of light. The results when they came in were a landmark in the history of human thought. The experimentally measured correlations between the photons consistently and decisively violated Bell's inequality. The degree of coordination between the distant particles was stronger than any local hidden variable theory could possibly allow. The predictions of quantum mechanics were confirmed with stunning accuracy. The universe had spoken, and it had said in the clearest possible terms that Albert Einstein was wrong. This result means that at least one of Einstein's cherished principles must be abandoned. You cannot have both locality and realism. You must choose. Either you give up realism and accept that properties of the universe are not definite until they are measured, the standard Copenhagen view, or you give up locality and accept that there are real, instantaneous, faster-than-light connections between distant points in space-time. Most physicists, while uncomfortable with it, have chosen to abandon locality. Spooky action at a distance is a proven feature of our universe.
the world is not a collection of separate, independent objects. It is a deeply interconnected, non-local web. Over the decades since Aspect's groundbreaking work, physicists have conducted countless increasingly sophisticated bell tests, closing every conceivable loophole and testing entanglement over vast distances. Every single test has confirmed the original result. The spooky, probabilistic, and non-local nature of the quantum world is now one of the most rigorously tested facts in all of science. The Bell Test is more than just another experiment. It is a scientific procedure that probes the very nature of reality itself. It transformed a question that had been purely metaphysical, what is the nature of being when unobserved, into a question that could be answered by physical experiment. It proved that our deep-seated, common-sense intuition about how the world works is fundamentally flawed. The universe is not a collection of separate objects with pre-existing properties that we discover. It is a holistic, interconnected system in which the act of observation plays a creative role in defining what is real. The final, profound whisper from Bell's theorem is the ultimate paradox. Albert Einstein, in his relentless, lifelong quest to expose the incompleteness of quantum mechanics and restore a sensible, classical reality, devised the very thought experiment that, through the genius of John Bell, ultimately led to the definitive, experimental proof that our universe is far stranger, spookier, and less sensible than even he could ever bring himself to imagine. Does the fact that the universe is fundamentally spooky and interconnected change how you view your place in it? Like this video if you were fascinated by the story of the test that put reality on trial. Share it with anyone who loves a deep philosophical and scientific puzzle. And comment below, which do you find harder to abandon? The idea that the world is real or the idea that it is local?